I'm in my pajamas and I'm stood outside. <laughs> I just saw the sun and I had to come out and look at it. I woke up like two seconds ago. But uh, we got a road trip, people. I need to get ready. Let me get my kit on and I start driving. <laughs> Good morning! I am absolutely buzzing to be alive today. The sky is the most vibrant wash of blue. There is not a cloud floating about. It's pure. It's wonderful. And I have been awake since 6am. <laughs> Therefore, you'd be correct in thinking that means something very, very exciting must be happening today. Yes. In fact, I'm going sailing! Well, not quite. I'm going on a ferry, but sailing sounds better. <laughs> With any luck, we'll bob across the Bristol Channel and we'll land on Lundy Island. Three miles long, one and a half miles wide, it's actually one of Natural England's designated charter areas, absolutely brimming with world-renowned wildlife, archaeology, history, stories. This place is just full of character. There's so much to see. In fact, I think it only like 23 people live there, if that's if no one's moved house recently. So it should be nice and quiet. Having said that, the lady at the ticket office did say there's going to be 200 people on the ferry today. Oh dear. <laughs> so I'll do my best not to just dissolve into the deck and actually just enjoy the journey, despite the crowds. Uh, I'm pretty sure once we hit the island, we'll actually... I'll be able to get away from everything. I'll find some freedom. I'll find some breathing space. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited to share today's journey with you. So the next plan then, having just driven here and I'm now sat in the car park at a really wonky angle, is to find the ticket office, get my tickets, sail across the ocean or not, <laughs> and land on the island and just see what we can see there. So I'm really staying open to learning as much as I can today, to enjoying the wildlife, enjoying the views, and just sharing that with you. I've also brought a lot of camera gear today, so I'm not exactly traveling light because I'm really hoping we can get some shots of the resident puffin population. Now the island is actually named after the old Norse word for puffin, which is Lundy. Uh, so it seems kind of mandatory that we get some shots of those guys as well. But we'll see what we can do. No expectations, no hopes. Just going to enjoy the journey and share it with you guys. So I think that's enough talk. How about we go get sunburnt? Yeah. Three, two, one, go! Woo! <laughs> I'd parked at a small car park away from the main harbour in Ilfracombe, arriving just as a number of fishing boats arrived with their catch. Ilfracombe's economy was based around maritime activities right up until the 19th century, although now it's predominantly served through tourism, utilising its fantastic coastal location. It's really great this time of day seeing all the fishing boats coming in. Oh, they really pull the boats in by hand and uh, just had a quick peek at some of their catch. Got a lot of stuff going on there. I'm full! <laughs> yeah, as you do! <laughs> Local fish caught from our own trawlers. Doesn't get any fresher than that stuff. Wow, look at this place! Goodness me! What an awesome harbour! So picturesque! Going diving? Yeah. Whereabouts? Lundy. Oh, sweet. That's yeah. cool. What sort of thing do you think you expect to see today? Uh, whales and sharks and tigers. Oh my gosh, as you do. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, I've learned something already. It's half a mile wide, not one and a half. It's even smaller than we thought. Okay. Thank you very much. There's your ticket for today. Mm, thank you. Boarding at half nine. Half nine. Ask you to tear the bottom strip off to hand okay, so okay. Cool. All right. Thanks Have very much. Done. Cheers, you two. You it's official. We're going to Lundy. Woo hey. <laughs> Ilfracombe is referred in the Doomsday Book of 1086 as the Anglo-Saxon Alfreen Sacoma, <clears throat> the Valley of the Sons of Alfred. The first mention of Ilfracombe was regarding the watchtower adjacent to the parish church. Oh cool, it's looked over the settlement and harbour. Originally a fishing village, it developed into a fashionable seaside resort in Victorian times. Very common transition there. Today it's a leading holiday resort in North Devon. Oh wow, look at that old steamer. <laughs> One of the things that's quite interesting about Lundy is you can literally either go for the day or you have to stay because the, the boat only runs every few days. I think it's like 
Thursday, Saturday, it's just every other day really. But uh, there's quite a few people there with luggage looking as though they're intending on staying. Hopefully no one will stay accidentally. <laughs> I enjoyed exploring the sights and sound of the harbour, soaking up the atmosphere of anticipation for the trip and gazing into the dazzling artwork crafted by the sea. What do you make of this then? That statue is called Verity, 20 and a half meters tall. It's like a pregnant woman, half external, half internal. <laughs> uh, certainly different, let's just put it that way. Verity was created by artist Damien Hurst and has been loaned to the town for 20 years. The statue depicts a pregnant woman holding aloft a sword while carrying the scales of justice and standing on a pile of law books. I've got 15 minutes before the boat actually leaves and uh, even though it's shut I thought we could just head up to St Nicholas's Chapel and it's just a really great space to see over the entire harbour so we'll climb up this rock face apparently. Look at this rock! What is this? <laughs> and then uh, make our way back down but let's go have a look. Views out over Ilfracombe over there. Oh, here we go. This is why I wanted to come up here. We're not even quite at the top yet. We can see down over the car park in Verity there. You can see the, the old berg that we're going to be travelling on. I don't know how they're going to fit so many people, but apparently they will. Dating back to 1321, the chapel was built as a place of worship for the people working and living around the harbour. Since the Middle Ages, it actually maintained a light to guide ships to safety and is still a working lighthouse today something which speaks to me about the importance of the church bringing people home. Yeah, it's officially warming up. Might even have to take my coat off. Although I'm just waiting to get on the boat because I'm sure there'll be a breeze. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Morning. Thank you very much. I have number 62. And we are officially leaving the harbour. In two hours time we will be on Lundy Island. It's 10 o'clock, let's go. <laughs> I was stoked to have a place on the edge of the boat and fixed my eyes on the waves, hoping to spot a dolphin or two. It was just glorious, with the sun shining bright illuminating the way and everyone was in good spirits, keen to hit Lundy and start exploring. Suddenly, from out of nowhere, we hit a wall of sea mist. It was cold, thick and atmospheric and the crew handed out blankets for those caught without warm gear. The temperature must have dropped at least 10 degrees, but I was determined to stay on deck with the hope of spotting some wildlife. Although, at one point, I did give in to the temptation of buying a coffee to try and warm up a little bit. After what felt like an age of staring into the gloomy horizon, we spotted the shadowy forms of cliffs up ahead. As we approached, they seemed ominous and dark, certainly not the conditions anyone was expecting. Once in the harbour, we joined a handful of sailing boats and then headed out onto dry land. It was time to explore. Thanks very much. Mind your fingers, watch your heads. Oh. Here we go, it's official, we're on Lundy. Now we just gotta work our way up the main pilgrim path, as I'm officially naming it, to the top and Beacon Hill, the main sort of settlement area. I'm still desperately trying to warm up. I can't stop shaking. So I may even have to hold the camera like this. <laughs> but uh, shorts maybe wasn't the best idea. There's quite a thick sea mist, which I wasn't anticipating, but you never know, it might burn off. And uh, we've got to be back for the boat at four o'clock. So we've got four hours to explore this special place towering cliffs above us. It's a pretty dramatic entrance. 
The main track that shuttles new arrivals up to the hamlet on the island is riddled with points of interest and fantastic views across the landing jetty below. The remote island is clearly a natural fortress, surrounded by high cliffs and submerged rocks. It's no wonder it has a legendary history as a pirate layer. One place we passed was Milcombe House, built in 1835 for the Heaven family. It's now open to members of the public and is an idyllic spot looking over the wooded valley below and out to sea. I knew this first part today would be busy but it just feels a bit surreal with all these people making their way towards the village. 200 plus of us. Entering the village, the first place encountered is the Morisco Tavern, a fascinating place that actually never shuts and is the only building on the island to maintain light when generators go out in the evening. Also in the village is a well-stocked general store based in the converted Linhaid building. It caters for residents, people staying on the island and for day visitors and the staff always seem to have a smile on their face. I found a path. We're gonna follow it. We'll see how this turns out. It's just so lovely already with the blue bells and the gorse and whatever the name of these pink flowers is. You've got the birds singing. The mist just adds even more atmosphere. It's lovely. The smell in the air is so fragrant. Oh man, let's get on top of some cliffs. Found some goats. I knew there was a population of goats here, but uh, I didn't realise their horns were quite so big. <laughs> As it turns out, there's currently 25 individual goats living on the island, which are annually monitored and maintained. There we go. There's a cliff. That'll do me. <laughs> I really have no idea if this mist is clearing. I mean, I haven't warmed up, but... <laughs> Everyone else walking up that hill was like, oh, it's so hot. But I mean, I've got the feeling back in my toes, which is an absolute delight. <laughs> and uh, you know, I haven't been able to stop smiling since I've got here, especially since I've started warming up a little bit, mostly because you just feel like you're stepping back in time in this place, in a sense that there's so few vehicles. And once you get past the masses of people, there's not many people either. And it's just, it feels wild and there's a triple SI, so a site of special scientific interest. It is monitored a lot, but it is a wild place as well, full of non-tamed wildlife that just comes and goes. And of course, it's subject to the elements as well. Listen to that skylark go. Now that's a bird that's got joy. We're coming up to the remains of quarter wall cottages. It really is just a, an empty shell, but it also seems to be an ideal spot for some Lundy ponies. So I might go and say hello. <laughs> Can I say hello? Are you friendly? Oh you are! Hello gorgeous! I'm sorry I don't have any food. I had a banana but I ate it. Don't eat me, I'm sorry for everything. In 1925, a mixture of New Forest and Welsh mountain ponies were introduced to the island in an attempt to establish a new breed. Now, there's currently around 20 ponies living on the island that are semi-feral meaning that apart from vet bills and the occasional hoof trimming, they're pretty much left to their own devices. You shall not pass. <laughs> Hi. You're a bit lovely. The small cottages were once home to around 300 individuals who worked for the Lundy Granite Company, formed in 1863. It is actually surprisingly wet underfoot. I mean, this is a prime example of some of the stuff we're moving through. <laughs> it's because of the peat, so it retains all the moisture that falls as precipitation. 
I was going to say runs off the land, but uh, this is the highest point pretty much, so <laughs> not going to run off from anywhere. But still, it's quite wet and it makes for prime growing conditions actually for many different sort of moorland plants. So we'll see what we can see. Here we go, look, I think this here is a termintil and we've got some ferns coming through. Pretty sure that's a termintil. That's a nice example actually. Beautiful yellow flower. We're just coming up to the remains of the hospital that was on the island and uh, as with the cottages it's derelict now but it really reinforces how the people living here did and still to some extent have to be self-sufficient. Uh, if the boats can't get across or the helicopter can't get across then you've got to look after yourself. So it really just reinforces that actually. Where does this go? Looks like a... Uh, I don't think I want to go that way. Wow. See all the way down there, down to the sea. That's my first cuckoo of the season. Oh, that is the best call. <laughs> Seriously, the one time I don't wear walking boots, they're kind of required. <laughs> I mean, look at this marsh I've got to get through. <laughs> Whoops. I think it's just going to be a case of running on water. Are you ready? I don't know that I am. She says, going precariously forward. That looks like a rock. There's a rock. I see a rock. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to try and land on that. In the moment, ugh, I can't reach. <laughs> okay, three, two. <gasps> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, we survived. Never threw a turn. Remind me not to come back this way. Ah, oh, here we go. We're onto climbing territory now. Look at this stuff. So it's halfway bay down there. Notorious for its sharks. Tiger sharks that you can see. Just coming up to halfway wall. I mean, it literally is a wall that signifies halfway on the island. Oh yes, now we're talking. Look at this viewpoint. You can just see the cliff stretching off into the mist. You've got this bay here. It's quite a long way down, don't you think? <laughs> wow. It was on these cliffs that I first sighted the island soy sheep, which I kept mistaking for goats. These primitive little mammals have changed very little since the Neolithic times and were introduced to the island from St Kilda in 1942. I'm sitting down on the job, but with good reason. I'd like to show you this rock. <laughs> this is granite. You can kind of see the quartz shining in the sunlight there. There we go, the sun has come out, which is wonderful. <laughs> so this, this granite makes up most of the northern part of the island and basically all of the sedimentary rock that would have been around it has been eroded away and that's why we just get this massive boulders and kind of seemingly random array of granite that remains because it's so hard wearing and it's such a challenge for the elements to actually erode it and, and remove it from the landscape. But it's so interesting to be able to see how once we've walked onto this granite, the, the landscape has kind of become like a moor. So we've got heather, low-lying heather, we've got sort of um, moorland grasses and, and the occasional bits of fern and quite a lot of moss actually. And it's kind of characteristic to what we'd find on Dartmoor. Now Dartmoor is also made of granite. So I just wanted to point out really that here as much as anywhere else is a prime example of how the geology underneath our feet actually shapes the landscape, so the flora and the fauna that we see around us. The mist is coming back in again with a breeze as well. It's not going to stop me, but it just means there's not much to see. It's kind of dawning on me how, firstly, how long it's taking to walk three miles up to the northernmost point. 
and it's just insane because you only get four hours here and the ferry like you've got to be back at the ferry for four o'clock and there is so much to see and you don't really want to rush here because you have no idea what wildlife you're going to bump into along the way especially when you can get away from the crowd and i haven't even touched on the archaeology that's up on barrow hill or whatever it's called there's some celtic stones awesome archaeology there but uh i've headed out straight this way and I'm really hoping it's going to pay off. I'm hoping the mist doesn't obscure everything because I don't want to miss out on the church and the Neolithic, Mesolithic remains when I'm trying to look for a lighthouse. I don't know. It's just a shame everything's so pushed for time. Nevertheless, I still am having a good time, so that's okay. Attempting to speed up finding the northernmost lighthouse, I cut across to the main bridleway that runs the length of the island. As I walked, I spotted even more sheep, and they didn't seem afraid of me, a lone walker emerging from the mist. It was lovely to spend a few moments getting a closer look at their fluffy coats and weathered faces. How is it possible to lose a lighthouse? I've gone to new levels of navigational shame. There's sea there, there's sea over there, and there's sea there. Ah, oh, there it is! Gosh, you can't see the lighthouse, people. It's all, it's down there, hidden by the, why do they always paint the white? <laughs> wow, okay. So, I've really not got long to spend here. What am I doing? Why am I on a rock face right now? I, I need to get down there. <laughs> okay, that looks like a nice abbey-sized shoot to sit on. Ooh, I'm glad it's granite. Okay, if I die, Bobby and Penny, my dogs, I love you. I do things alone people. I've ended up on a rock. Ooh. Okay change of plan. There's the lighthouse. I'm going back that way. There's no point in me walking all the way down to it. Just to have to walk all the way back up. I can save myself 10 minutes. I really 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 want to get onto the western side now. See what wildlife we can see. There's a potential for seals, potential for puffins. I know we got some weird weather to work with, but I just don't want to miss the opportunity. It's nearly half past two. I have to be all the way back down at the harbour for four o'clock. So I just, I'm feeling time. Goodbye, lighthouse. Thanks for being really not that obvious. This way. <laughs> just come off the main tourist path. I keep calling it that as though it's a mountain, but the main bridleway that goes through the middle. And I'm on this coastal path now, just winding my way around the granite rocks. And I'm feeling quite disheartened that the mist just seems to be getting thicker and thicker. And, you know, I've really upped my pace and then slowing it down now so I can talk to you guys. But I don't know, the chances of me seeing something are getting slimmer as the mist gets thicker but I think what will tell me that there's puffins or something to see is that there'll be people looking at them so if anything I'm people watching right now trying to see if I can see any and it's also interesting because this kind of landscape here for some people will be quite intimidating and all kinds of people come to Lundy uh, I don't think they expect this and if I'm honest I didn't expect these conditions so but thankfully, you know, I'm experienced to being in the remote moors in pretty harsh conditions. So this doesn't bother me at all, other than the fact that I can't see anything. <laughs> wow. Now that's some dramatic geology. Goodness me, look at those cliffs. I have no idea what I couldn't see on the eastern side of the island because of the mist, but I can say for sure the cliffs on the western side of the island simply took my breath away. 
Hmm. I can't see any puffins. Wait. Yes! There's puffin! Look at them all! They're so much further away than I thought they were going to be, but there actually are puffins! Lundy has always been known for its variety of bird life, and the puffins are the island's most famous seabird. Unfortunately for me, as I couldn't see clearly which species of bird I was looking at, what I thought were puffins actually turned out to be razorbills. It is possible, though, that there were puffins in with the mix, as they're often found amongst razorbills and other orc species, such as guillemots. <gasps> seal! There's a seal! There's a seal! There's a seal! Come on, get the seal, get the seal, get the seal, don't miss the seal. There's actually around 180 Atlantic grey seals residing around Lundy, and whilst on a sunny day they're pretty easy to spot lounging around on warming rocks, they're harder to see on misty days like this one, so I really struck it lucky. I could just stare at that scene for hours, just the waves against the rocks. Okay, officially away from that spot now. I have one hour, one hour to get back to the boat. Oh, okay, it's time to put my fitness to the test and move. Um, okay, which foot do I sacrifice? That looks quite deep. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, okay, it's my right foot. Oh, oh man, what have I done? Never mind, I didn't need that foot anyway. Oh. It's quite cool to keep bumping into the deer. They're just there now. Seeker deer are originally from Japan and were introduced to Lundy in 1927. Since 1955, however, the population has had to be regulated by annual culls due to the amount of damage caused by a large population to the land and sites of special scientific interest. They really are beautiful animals and I was mesmerised every time we crossed paths. I've re-evaluated my situation and I'm going this way until I join the main bridleway, way and then I'll catch up some speed. I can always cut back across, but I need to make some progress. So the mist surrounds, still the skylark sings. You guys looking at the pig? Yeah. Oh, look at it. <laughs> Living the dream, gosh. <laughs> finally, 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 there are buildings ahead of us. Now, I wasn't exactly worried about that timing, but I've certainly been pushing because I want to have a little bit of time to show you the church. And I don't think I'm going to have time to have a look at the castle, which is the southernmost point but we'll see how quickly we can do the church and then we'll do the castle if we can before legging it back down to the ferry Whew. I found a campsite oh I would love to stay here <laughs> St Helen's Church has a fascinating history and was actually built on a burial ground with memorial stones dated to between the 5th and 8th centuries. It was started in 1244 as the church of this island and yet by the 17th century it had fallen into disrepair and a temporary corrugated iron structure was dedicated to St Helen. The present building was constructed in the mid 1890s and interestingly it doesn't conform to the usual east-west alignment 
possibly as a result of a deep clay bed found at the site when foundations were laid. Really enjoying the stretch back down to the ferry. They've made a real effort with the trees that are growing to cover them in this like gnarly, washed up wood. But <laughs> I suppose earlier today it was just crammed full of people, but now it's really pleasant. It's so much nicer now that the mist is clearing up. You can see the cliffs going on that so we walked along earlier. I know I've only been here for four hours, but I'm really feeling quite humbled by my time here on Lundy Island. You know, with the mist down, it really emphasised the vulnerability of this place, just 12 miles off the mainland, and yet it's so special. We can only see what the island gives up, and there's so many secrets that it wasn't willing to share today. And that's okay, it's just a great reason to have to come back. But especially now that the mist has cleared and I'm almost back at the ferry and I'll be able to watch as the island gets smaller in the distance. You know, I'm just so glad that I can reflect on all of the emotions that I felt today. From absolute elation at seeing the puffins and the seals, albeit from a distance, but to actually a little bit of worry as to how far am I from where I'm supposed to be and where the flip is that lighthouse? <laughs> but uh, I'm going to really treasure today. It's just full of memories, full of wonderful experiences. And I tell you, I'll be counting down the days till I come back. But guys, until next time, stay wild. <laughs> Thank you very much. As I boarded the Oldenburg and readied myself for the journey back, I noticed the lighthouse and castle looking out from the cliffs high above, and then watched as the harbour got smaller before being completely engulfed by the mist. It left me questioning whether the day had been a dream. It certainly felt like one, but Dream or not, I realised at that point that Lundy had stolen my heart. It really is a wonderful, mysterious and magical place. Two hours later and we emerged into the dazzling sunlight we'd left behind that morning, only this time it was more vibrant and spectacular, welcoming us back to the mainland as we each prepared ourselves for our journeys home. It really had been an incredible day. Thanks very much. You too, take care.